I'm just trying to do the best I can for the love I'm just trying to keep it real I'm not trying to be a star They like to talk about my life They don't know how it is I'm a true soldier They can't change the way I live Muslim, call me fake Call me what you want I'm just here to deliver my message And the boy is gone Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to another Dean Check It's your boy Musa Salam And your brother Abu Bakr Islam We're here today we're going to be discussing the topic of halal and haram money, the benefits of getting that job, providing for your family, you know, in a halal way. All the benefits that come with that is, you know, just feeling like a man and knowing that you're out there, you're struggling, you're doing something positive. And then we talk about the haram money that we know is out there. And most of the time people call it easy money, but in reality we know it's hard, it's blood, sweat and tears, but there's no benefit in it. So like, okay, let's touch on this. Let's get straight into it. Let's start with the haram. We know that a lot of men's getting that haram money, a lot of sisters are getting that haram money in lots of different ways, whether it's robbing, stealing, fraud, different ways of getting that haram money. And a lot of time we hear it as the easy money. But in reality, when you check it, mm -hmm. coming from the background that maybe we come from or other brothers that we know, instead of we talk about that money of hustling, you know, selling drugs and, and getting yourself to a position where you have wealth, there's no easy money about that mm -hmm. because you're on the roads. You know, you're out there from morning till night. You've got feds on your back. You've got men that want to rob you, men that want to do. So there's nothing easy about it, but a lot of men take that option. I think what you said is important in regards to you. A lot of people think just because maybe a person's on the street doing certain things, they think that it's easy money. Mm. And in reality, it's, there's nothing easy about it at all. Because the risk what comes with trying to do that, live that lifestyle, is, is second to none. Like you said, worrying about police worrying about people on the road, mm. worrying about many things that you're going to have to think about on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, we live in a society where the majority of the young people that you see who are involved in this criminal lifestyle is because it's portrayed in a way that people beautify it and make it look like mm. it's such an attractive lifestyle. Mm. I mean, we've come from that lifestyle, from a lifestyle of selling drugs, robbery, crime, you name it. We, 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 mm. Either we've done it or we've had people around us who've done it. Mm. And subhanAllah, it's not easy. It's not a joke. And like I said, when we grow up, one thing I would say in regards to haram money, it's not easy, but it's fast money. Yeah, it's fast money. Because com comparison, if you compare it to a normal job, like, let's say, for example, in Jahilia, we were, we were running lines, we were making like a grand a day. Yeah. Now, you get a job, we've worked jobs that pays us maybe £1,500 a month, and we make that in a day. So you understand? Right. A day and a half, we've got that money. Yeah. Do you understand? The money that we maybe we make in one month, is people are making that that's what it takes them a whole year to make it so when you look at compared to that would say yeah the money is fast oh, money because it's coming quick, quick you know, but so the risks what come with it how many easy. people do we know who are in jail doing 10 years for drugs yeah. doing 15 years for firearms how many brothers do we know even muslims we know who are doing ipp been in jail seven eight years don't know when they're coming out so for it's easy for people to say this is for, uh, it's easy money it's not because yeah. when the law comes down on you and the consequences come they're no joke but when we want to talk about haram money in totality, we want to talk about it from an angle, from an Islamic perspective. Now, brothers and sisters in Islam, if you're an individual, you're a young person who's watching this video and you're thinking, you know what, I want to do fraud, I want to do bank scams, I want to sell drugs, I want to, I want to rob, I want to steal, I need money, I need this, I need that. Yeah, in these things, what we're talking about, there's money in it. We're not going to so, come here and fool the people and talk mm. rubbish. You can get what? You can get money. Mm. You can get a hundred grand, fifty grand. You can get money. It's true. Yeah, so but wallahi, I tell you this, brothers and sisters in Islam, that money has no barakah in it whatsoever. No barakah. I've had money. I've had money. Wallahi, I've had money. I've seen money. Real money. Not fifty, a hundred grand. I've seen real money. Mm. And I've seen it come and I've seen it go. Sorry. Because there's no bad card, there's nothing in nothing. the money, there's nothing, nothing in it. And a lot of us young people, we strive to get that money, looking for that happiness, looking for that fulfillment in life, thinking, you know what, if I have that, I'm going to be successful. But Sorry. what they don't know, if that, if you take that path to get that money, you're not going to see no happiness. Sorry. It's, it's to the point where that money is that sometimes you only realise the money that you've had when it's gone. Oh. But you don't even see it. In reality, when you have the money, you don't even understand what you have, how fast it is. Like you said, it's not easy, but it's fast. To the point is that 
in a month or two you can go through 30 grand mm. in two months mm. and then by the end of that month you've done holiday trips spending everything and at the end of that month you're left with seven grand mm. Mm. and within those two months you had th- and you've only realized hold on i've just spanked 23 so grand mm. where is that gone mm. so it's like you've you that's how fast it is it's not only fast attaining it but it's also fast while it's leaving mm-hmm. so it comes in and goes out mm-hmm. but nevertheless even though we we see that cycle of money coming in and going people still go down that route they still make it an option in their life it's like they never look you know one thing that we always speak about is that not allowing certain things to be an option in your life because mm-hmm. once something is always an option then you're going to go back to it but how many times do we see from the roads until now that a man has 30 40 grand he gets nicked goes jail or he loses it mm-hmm. and he's left with nothing mm-hmm. and again he goes back and this mm-hmm. don't happen once it happens two or three it times goes, it goes time. but you know what sometimes i think that boils down to is like especially in our community and where we're from it's sometimes we feel like we can't do nothing else but this it's like no, no, no even becoming a Muslim, what is our qualifications before Islam? Mm. Everything we know, the things we know how to make money are all wrong. No, you understand? And majority of the people that we know before um, Islam, the ones who are not Muslim, and even some of them who are Muslim, they're still doing the same things that we were doing 10 years ago. You understand? Mm. It's a vicious circle because it's like, that's all you know. So when you've got older youths like, who are 35 years old, still going country, been in lines, you're like, you're 37 years old and you're still going country, billing lines. Like, billing phone lines. Are you still on that? We were doing that 10, 15 years ago. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. But when it's all, that's all you know. Then sometimes you, it's like, Shaitan makes you feel like there's no other hope in anything else. You try to go and get a job, there's no work. you got no qualifications. you got no degree. you got no, you got no um, MVQs or anything what can give you some kind of avenue to open a door. So you're just going to say, you know what, this is what I know. And that's why I think a lot of people end up going back down that route. But one thing that we find within, you know, within the road life, there's a perception of what's young and what's old. Mm-hmm. So on the roads, when you're 25, we look at it as old. Mm. Man say, when I'm 25, I need to be coming out of the game. I mm. need to have made this money, 200 bags, whatever. Mm. I need to be coming out of the game. Then you come to Islam. And also we look at it like if you haven't, uh, attain a certain level of education by that age mm. we look at it as like it's a wrap mm. you know what mm. I'm saying but then you come to Islam and you find that you see uncles around you 40, 45 and they're going into education and they're better in their lives and they're opening up new avenues at that age and they seem they deem to see themselves as young individuals mm-hmm. you know and from the background that a lot of the brothers that you said are coming from they're coming mm-hmm. from a background where they feel like it's too late mm-hmm. you know I'm in my late 20s I'm approaching early 30s I'm in mm-hmm. my early 30s now I can't I ain't got time to go back and get this and I ain't got time but so sometimes some, some, sometimes you find that an individual will spend three or four years and procrastinating about thinking, should he, yeah, time, should he, this, should and he, he could have really achieved something yeah. that could have gotten to where he wants to be. But I think that's I think when you look at it like that, I think that's one of the tricks of the shaitan as well because he loves making you waste time. Mm. You understand? There's many things that we said I should have done. I should have done this when I was this age and whatnot. And years have gone by, and it's like if I would have started when I had that intention, yeah. I would have been done by now. Sorry. Do you understand? But like I said, in regards to the shaitan, and sometimes even friends. Cause you might go to a companion, you might go to someone and you say, you know what, I look, you'd be like, nah, leave that man, that's long, I don't mm. waste your time with that, go down this avenue, you understand? Three, four years later, you're still in the same path, you're still not doing anything, and you could, you think back to yourself, you know what, if I would have just, if I would have got better advice or listened to someone else, I would have had this qualification, I would have had this degree, I would have had some tools, what could help me in this life, and make me make things better for me in this life and in the hereafter. And that's important because you find that that's within that companionship that you get individuals that say to you, no, that's long, mm-hmm. and then you don't see the man for three or four years, and he took that route that you were speaking so about. Like and you're saying, what's going on? He's like, yeah, I went to uni and I've done it. You say, ah, you told me uni mm-hmm. was long. Mm-hmm. And because you listen to that individual, and now you find yourself that he's actually, that you was correct and he was wrong, but you didn't take the t- time out to find that Who's talking right and who's talking nonsense? Yeah, sure. And you find that being and surrounding yourself with good companionship is a means of taking those steps of leaving halal money mm-hmm. to get onto that halal money and taking mm-hmm. good advice. But always, obviously, okay, someone that's been doing halal money now and they've been shot and they've been selling drugs, whatever. And sometimes also a lot of the of the women they're in that position where 
a lot of sisters before Islam and during some that were born Muslim that by Hadha Jahiliya were used to going into banks and you know doing scams and things mm. like that or holding drugs mm. for individuals that were selling drugs and things like that and their risks are still the same they don't see them as big risks mm. they see them as minimal mm. and some of them are Muslims and they're still doing the same thing mm -hmm. you know and they're still caught up in you know holding certain things that they shouldn't for individuals and they get paid for it and things like that mm. you know how do how do they you know kind of take those steps of coming off at the end of the day what we remember first and foremost is nothing gonna nothing good is gonna come from bad is it you yeah. understand so when a sister uh or even a brother because this happens to brothers as well if you're a young person out there and someone's saying you, you know what hold this whole drugs for me hold a gun for me hold this hold that you have to realize that you can't just think oh, i'm doing this person a favor because if the law come down on you you're going to jail you understand you're gonna be accountable for these actions Mm -hmm. So you need to be an individual who's strong-minded and said, you know what, I don't want to take no part in this. I don't want to take no part in this. If you're a sister right there and your husband's doing haram, don't let him, his haram, be a part of your life. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Sorry. Obviously, advise your husband. Don't encourage him to push him yeah. into that life. So where he feels that he's shy to, if he's doing any of that stuff, he can't come home and, and be, let it be done on the table. Yeah, of course, he hides it. And one of the other biggest problems that we have to realise is that a lot of the brothers here yeah, were doing things like robberies, mm -hmm doing bank scams, doing selling drugs, and they're going home and feeding their family with this money. Yeah, and you have to remember, we know according to Islam, you're putting fire in your children or your wife's belly. Yeah, you understand? Sorry. And even yourself if you're eating with that. Yeah. So there's so many things that sometimes we don't contemplate. We think, oh, I've got to look after my family. But really, you're not looking after your family. You're making things worse for your family because what you're putting inside them is haram. Yeah, because we do get a lot of that. You know, a lot of situations is that we find a lot of brothers that come home after sitting down for a hot minute having a bid and they come home now four or five years mm -hmm. and we get this a lot in the UK and in the US that a man comes home from doing a bid he's sitting down and everybody around him is up mm -hmm. you know a man's coming yeah, to the masjid right. in the BMW sisters are pulling up in the CL yeah, so yeah. a man's like yo is this what it is Is mm -hmm. these the levels and mm -hmm. he's got a family to, to, to look after and he wants a CL he wants mm -hmm. a BM and he's like ain't no normal job gonna get me this mm -hmm. so now a man feels that it's not, the pressures are not just outside of his community in the non-muslim world it's in the islamic world it's true, that people it's true. are doing well but it doesn't mean kind of sister or the brothers pulling up in the beer like, yeah, yeah but true. at the same time that's what he knows so these this fitna now is on him and he feels that like, i gotta get this money up and before you know it a man's sitting back in prison and he's back in the bing but what you said was important is that the family the wife and the children they pay they play an important role play an important in, role, in yeah. how your husband moves because sometimes if, if as a man if you feel like your family are always talking about money well, under, or you get the money then without a shadow of a doubt 100 percent, 100 percent. because look i know brothers who are in jail because of their wives i'm not saying it's solely because of their no. wife because of pressure in it obviously no. the brothers crumbled isn't it yeah because no one didn't put a gun to you said the time no. to do anything but certain brothers are coming on and their wives complaining all the time i ain't got this ain't got that what are we gonna do and you see man who's come from the street in particular when he hears that it's like it's like a siren goes off in his head because no. he's like you know what forget this i need to get any it. man because as an individual it. as a man you know the man has that you know that's why we're like the maintainers a man feels that pride of providing for his family mm. you know that he wants good for his children and he wants good for his wife and we know from the uh, from the story of um, Yus um, ibrahim salam, when he left ismail and you know he and he come to the house and he knocked on the door and he asked the wife certain questions and she complained mm -hmm. and then he said and he told the wife when he comes back tell him to change the threshold of the door mm -hmm. meaning change your wife because she complained said mm -hmm. how's your life how is it and he never met his son he mm -hmm. just came he weren't there he told her she complained about how they were living we don't have this we don't have that he said when he comes back tell him to change the threshold of the house so what he done he divorced her he came back again looking for her knocked on the door looking for Ismail, he, he wasn't there again, next wife that he married, he asked her, how are you living? Alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, you know, mm -hmm. not that pressure, then he mm -hmm. realised, this is a good woman. Okay, at the end of the day, look, it's, we're human beings, innit, if we're going through some hardship, we complain to a degree, there's nothing wrong with that, I'm not saying like, maybe according to Islam, we should have patience, innit, we what know What we that. get from this story is that, though, is that this, this pressure is... Complaining to your husband is one thing, but you find that some of the sisters Complaining to other outside people, the house, so that's and this worse. is pressure on a man. That's, that's terrible as well because you got to understand, you got to look at it like this: you're you're spreading this this information 
other brothers are going to find that and mm. that's embarrassing for oh, your husband that's embarrassing. embarrassing no brother who hasn't got maybe like a good job or he's not maybe comfortable at home wants the whole world to know that he's in that situation no. and if he's got a wife who's spreading that information and not keeping the stuff in the home private then that's going to affect his iman it's going to affect him because when he's thinking about when he's praying he's thinking about money no. How am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And to top it up, he knows his wife is stressed as well. So that's a double pressure now. Pressure. you got, maybe you've got a uh, bailiff that's coming through the door. That's yeah. one thing. Then you've got your wife on top of you. That's why we see many brothers that end up going to the door saying, you know what, I'm just going to go lick it. I'm just going to go rob something. Or I'm just going to stop sending drugs because mm. that's the only way I'm going to be able to put myself in a comfortable position because mm. at the time now, I haven't got maybe the qualification or the means to get a job because we know, Akhi, to be honest with you, many brothers do try to get jobs. Look what they're doing in the community, in the society that we live in now. Yeah. They're giving people jobs, zero hour contracts. Zero hour contract. You don't even know when you're going to work. No. You can, might not even work for a whole month. Deep. What does that individual do? So many, I, like, I'm thinking of a brother, I was just talking about my mind. I know a brother, can't lie, the brother came out of jail for long. He went to jail for doing whatever he was doing. And he's a money man. He's known to be a money man. He came out, he was on the grind. You understand? He got a little job. The job was a joke. He weren't paying him no money. He was spending more money than he was making. Surprising. And it got to a stage where he was cornered. Mm. Do you understand? And he just like, he couldn't take it no more. Mm. He's got bills to pay. He's got this, he's got that. So he went back to what he what he knows. Mm. Now the brother's back in jail. So we pray our Allah sometimes to make it easy for him. Mm. But this is the situation that we're in that we need to support one another, especially as a community, mm. as brothers and sisters and help one another and see there's opportunities or there's things that we can help people make money. We need to think about individuals. Mm. You understand? Because there's sincerely, a lot of brothers and sisters want to do the halal road. Mm. They want to go down the halal road. Mm. But it's very difficult. Now, now getting onto the halal, because we know in reality, getting onto the halal route is that everybody that I know that gets haram money or did get haram money, there was never no benefit. Mm. Even though they get cornered into a situation and they go back to it, when they find themselves in it, they know there's no benefit. But what you like, you said at that moment, it relieves that pressure. Yeah, yeah, no, you know, it's pressure. Nobody 100%. don't like pressure. Nobody likes living around pressure, that stressness. And even though they know they're not happy, but it just relieves that pressure because. If the family don't know how you're getting it in, somebody's happy. Maybe mm. you're not happy, but you see your kids are smiling. Mm. You're like, so you just feel like, ah, I'm all right. Mm. But them as an individual, it's crushing them. Mm. So a man now, he gets his halal job, he's striving. It's not paying well though, mm. isn't it? And you know, you can't do the things that you know he, he wanted to do before. Mm. What are the, the tactics? Because we know as individuals that's made that transition yeah. and that's worked and got that job, you're still able to go on holiday, make an umrah, take mm. your family here and there, mm. but there's, there's, there's steps on mm. how to save mm. and how to navigate. Mm. You know, how can we advise the brothers? I think, that? first and foremost, we have to remember, yeah, the first thing we have to remember when you're doing a halal job is that, first and foremost, your money is halal. This is not like, this is something we yeah. belittle. Some of the brothers, they got jobs working in supermarkets. Mm. Some brothers have got cleaning jobs. No. And we belittle these brothers. No. You understand? Some brothers are selling utter. Mm. And we look at them like, ah. Oh. Where we have brothers who are working in jobs, was promoting and pushing riba. No. Things that Allah Ta'ala is displeased with. And we look at these individuals and, and we praise them. No. When there might be that other individual who is better, who the one who's selling the utter, who's doing these small things, getting small money, but his money is halal. That's the first thing you have to remember. You have to say to yourself, you know what, alhamdulillah, I'm listening to my Lord. I'm listening to the creator of the heavens and the earth by getting halal risk, first and foremost. Mm. Second, you have to remember that your money has barakah in it. 100%, no shadow of a doubt. When you're getting that halal money, it could be small, it's got barakah in it. A lot of halal will put barakah in your money and that money will stretch. But one of the things a lot of people need to realize is that you can still do the things that you couldn't do, like you were doing before, no. like go on holidays and whatnot, but it's all about planning now. No. You understand? Okay, I want to go Umrah. You might not be able to go Umrah next year, so you plan for the next year. Well, that's massive so what you're saying about planning because we know that when we're getting that haram money, you got so much money coming in, you don't plan that. You can, you, you you can do just, whatever yeah, you want because you you've, got, you've got the money, you've got the flexibility. Yeah. But you now know you're getting a grand to a month. Yeah. You're getting 900 pounds a month. It's mm. tight right now. Mm. You understand? So you've got to be realistic to yourself and say, you know what? Okay, inshallah to Allah, it's 2014 now. Mm. I want to go Umrah next year. I might not be able to go next year, but definitely in 2016, mm. if I save this amount a month, mm. I'm going to be able to go. This is how we have to be. And we have to have patience with it. But you know, when you go to that Umrah, no. that money you use for that Umrah, no, <coughs> it was halal. No, you understand? When you went to the house of Allah SWT, it was halal. You understand? And you can't compare the one who makes halal money with the haram money. Look at the hadith the Prophet said, the man who is walking, 
and he was out there and he was, I don't know if he was in the middle of a desert or something like this. And he reached out to, to make dua to Allah. Yeah. And he said, how are Allah going to answer his dua? His, 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 his clothes is haram. Man. The food he eats is haram. It's Everything's haram. haram. Yeah. Allah, has Allah going to, why would Allah answer your dua? Everything you do is haram. Man. You know what I'm trying to say to you? So we as brothers and sisters, we need to understand halal money. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy. But you have to remember the barakah and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what we need to we need to remember first and foremost. And secondly, another thing that I just wanted to mention that Allah Ta'ala says fifty thousand years before he created the heavens and the earth, he wrote down our risk. Man. He wrote down what you're gonna get, I'm gonna get. Every person in the dunya is gonna get. So whether if you're getting fifty bags a year doing haram money and getting ten bags a year doing halal money, you have to remember that money you were getting haram, you would have got that anyway. No, you didn't get something what wasn't written for you. It was yours. Your name was written all over that money. But it's up to you to take the path which it's way right. you want to get it. But in regards to whatever you get, and sometimes Shaitan makes me play like, oh, look at all the money I had in jail. I say, listen, that was written for me. Yeah, I took the wrong path to get it. But if it's written for me to make another a million pounds, I'm going to get that money. Sorry. But it's about how am I going to attain it. And that's true. That reminds me of the hadith. I think uh, Fala knows best. It was Ali Radila Anho who... He went to pray and he left his riding beast with a young boy and he told him to hold on to it. And then when he came back, he sold it. And then he asked the people, how, how much did he sell it for? And then when the people told him, I think it was free dinar, he said, subhanAllah, because my intention was when I come back from Salah was to give him free dinar. SubhanAllah. So it showed that he was going to get that free, mm, free dinar yeah, anyway. whatever, whatever happened. But he chose to take that way, which is haram. So that's an important point for us to realize that our risk is written. And whatever's going to happen, we're going to attain it. And you know, it all goes back to Tawheed as well. Yeah. Because if you ain't got that Tawheed, you ain't got that understanding of Yaqeen, there's a lot of things that you will start to drift drift, diff, no. drift, and differ from. You understand? Especially right. when it comes to money, when it comes to marriage, you know, all these things. Because yeah. your your trust and Tawakul yeah. elapsed. Right. And all of us are human beings. I'm not going to go on that. We're pious here. Like, we don't have days that we're a little bit depressed or a little bit sad because things are not going the way we want to go. But we have to remember as Muslims, we know that Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, do you think you're going to be a believer and not be tested? Do you think what, Jannah's going to be handed to you on a plate? It doesn't work like that. You so understand? Really, and I think it's important also that as a community that we kind of look out for the brothers and, and we support them in any halal ventures that they take. 100%. And, and we try our best to, because a lot of the brothers, especially because we promote this being self-sufficient in terms of in the dunya because we know Allah is the one that provides for us but in terms of running your own businesses mm. and having products that you know you own and you work for yourself mm. but a lot of the Muslims feel like the Muslim community as a whole we don't really like supporting our, ourselves and it's also true. like you was talking about not belittling a man or a sister that is doing good okay look at this look in jail if you saw someone do a dustbin cleaner would laugh at this individual no, if you see someone selling utters or uh, oh, think, What's this? this guy's a waste man like that's how we would yeah. think but as a Muslim, you can't think like that. Can't when I see that. brothers who are sending utter, I say to myself, Subhanallah, I don't, I don't really like putting utter on my skin because when I put utter on my skin, I get a like, reaction, I get irritation. But what I try to do, inshallah, is like, I support him. Yeah. In the sand, even if it's two pound, three pound, I just yeah. take the utter and I give it to someone else. Yeah. Why do I do this? Because we're going to be the first one talking if we hear that brother's licking it. Yeah. So this is why it's important for us to support these brothers when they're doing these little things. Because we're the first, always the first to start criticising and saying, you know what, look, that brother's doing that, he's sending haram, he's doing this and doing that. But when he was out there selling utter, when he was out there doing these things with trying to get halal risk, none of the Muslims were supporting him. No, um, it's important. So what I get from this, especially this topic in halal and haram money is that we know the tricks of the shaitan in keeping a, a person in doing the haram and thinking that there's benefit. And we know that sometimes it's, uh, that it's not just uh, a person fighting with his own nafs and his own desires, it's that of his family, his children and those that are around him. And it's mm -hmm. important that the family members are careful in how they talk about what takes place in the house, you know, mm -hmm. how, what your husband's making or what he's not making. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and he struggles and not to really spread it within the community and to also to have patience with him and encourage him, you know, to, to do good in terms of, you know, seeking that risk and to just be there for him as an individual. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time, you know, the brothers, most of the time, you know what man is. Man's always doing things for women and they fall into a lot of Shabana. evils like this. Shabana. And also, isn't that, um, we take that also that, Within the halal money, there's a lot of benefit. There's a lot of baraka. It's it can never be compared to that which is haram. And as a brother or sister, you know, taking those steps and getting that which is pure is that 
before Islam or before when you were just doing the halal thing, there was no planning, it was mm-hmm. just spending as you would because money was always coming in fast. Mm-hmm. And now your money's coming in slow, but it has barakah that it stretches longer. Take time, plan your things out, plan ahead, and you know, try to you know, just plan what you're trying to do with your money, and you will see the barakah, you see, you know, the blessings that come with it. Mm-hmm. And that's the end note for me, inshallah. Okay, we see you again, inshallah, next week on another Dean Check. Don't, so, forget to, don't forget to like and subscribe and share the videos, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.